Jordan uh, Hell was a, was a guy who, you know, as a young man, he went and got a law degree at Northumbria University. He then travelled to the Far East on his own, just backpacked and off he went. Wow. He'd worked in, in London. He'd gone out to Dubai to work with a close friend at his law firm over there. In more recent years, he took a role uh, with uh, the immigration, uh, with the Home Office at, uh, as an Office of Immigration Officer. And in the last two or three years of his career was an officer with the Independent Office of Police Conduct um, okay. in, in Yorkshire. Um, he had his own house, uh, it's a second house now he'd bought. Uh, he had a, a great relationship um, with his partner, Charlotte. Um, he had a little Mini Cooper uh, that <laughs> through an inheritance from an aunt who passed away, he named Olga. It was one of the old Mini Coopers. Um, oh, 70s version, red with the white stripes and, you know, and his beloved little cat, Tabby, who he adopted from another family from his previous house with their permission, um, and had this incredible network of friends, um, you know, that, that I got to learn more about subsequent to, to his death, really, that, that through university friends, through his friends in Leeds, where he lived, through his friends in Morecambe, where he was brought up before we all emigrated as a family to Canada in the early 90s. I mentioned I worked in North America earlier, yes. where he was brought up, you know, for several years and, and returned to the UK in 97 as a Canadian boy, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, he was someone that um, his friends would look to with some degree of envy and and you know he was allowed achieving all kinds of things um also an extremely caring and considerate guy he was he was the guy that his friends would come to if they were struggling he'd think nothing of jumping in his car and driving a couple of hundred miles for a mate who was maybe you know going through some tough times and you know i've heard stories of nights out in newcastle with his mates where they'd look over their shoulder to see where jordan was only to find him bent down talking to a homeless guy on the on the street, and oh, wow. you know, so stories that make you very, um, yeah, you know, very proud of 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 who he was as as a person, and yet, going back to his CBT therapy, one of the things that, of course, you have to go through when you lose someone to suicide is is you've got to deal with their personal affairs. You've got to deal with everything. And part of that journey involved going back to Jordan's house, going into the attic and finding boxes of possessions that included partially completed journals from years gone by, that included those CBT therapy notes to discover that your son was suffering from something called body dysmorphia, um, Oh, that wow. we had no idea about that he kept hidden from everybody really but to the extent that he couldn't uh, pass mirrors and windows in streets and get changed in swimming bath changing rooms um and this was the source of his therapy at the time and none of us had any idea um and then the journals of course that we read they were not complete years but there were periods of time from 2015 and, you know, when you bring those journals home and we're all sitting here as a family and and, and then you, you read a line, you know, from 2015 that says, I've been researching methods of suicide again today. I found this method looks like an option, but difficult to get hold of. You go, wow. You know, this journey for Jordan had been going on for such a long time and yet none of us really had any any idea. But the Baton of Hope really encapsulates probably everything we've talked about today, really, Stefano. So this is an event that will happen in the summer of 2023. I've just offered a meeting yesterday with the organisation that's helping us put this together. Um, we're, we're not announcing it yet, but we've kind of got a two week period in mind now in July of 2023. And I, if you can imagine, cast your mind back to nine years previous. Um, and um, in fact, at this stage, sorry, it'll be 13 years previous um, to 2012 and the London Olympics, uh, London yes. 2012, and the torch bearing processions that took place all around the UK. We will be, uh, in a sense, emulating that event at a national scale throughout Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, 
um, and uh, England, um, where a baton or batons will travel the length and breadth of the con country. Um, there will be flagship events taking place at various uh, locations throughout the UK. Um, and we will be engaging with the whole population. So from the general public to workplaces, to the government, to the healthcare services and charities and the digital world, we'll all come together for a two week period where there will be events running uh, in regions, through schools, through the education sector, um, evidence of um, where success is taking place to help prevent suicides, um, talks from people that have experienced it firsthand. There'll be music happening, there'll be celebrities involved. It is fast becoming the biggest event I'll ever be involved with in, in my lifetime. Um, and uh, we jokingly referred to kind of Live Aid yesterday um, <laughs> where, when there was talk about uh, flying Phil Collins from one location to, to another. But uh, 